Hi there, this is Sam Mortley. This is my 10 minute video for studio production, focusing on, on my track called Star Sailing. And I'm going to talk you through the processes that I used to create this track. Um, so first, first of all, um, I used a microphone and this one is the Shure SM81 which is a pencil cardioid condenser. Um, it's super sensitive and it's very got a very narrow um, polar pattern. So it rejects. So it rejects heavily at the sides and the back. Um, whereas if it was a super cardioid or hypercardioid, then you would get you would still get some noise at the rear but because of because it's just the cardioids it is just purely from the front um, so yeah that's the microphone covered and I use that for my vocals straight into my motto interface um, which I always set so this is the inputs never too low so so i get noise floor but never too high that i get clipping going on i always look at the meters and make sure it never goes into the red um because so as you can see if i if i uh talk too loud into it and i don't i don't attenuate that then uh it's going to clip and the recording will sound horrible so that's my interface that I use to transfer it to my DAW. Um, so a hardware instrument is um, the guitar and hardware effects would be um, other um, devices of hardware would be my pedal board for the, for the guitar, um, which obviously runs through the guitar and and then the input goes straight into um, straight into there, straight into the motu. About so I use shimmer reverbs um, using the well. It's got many modes, but I use the the shimmer one. And then when the chorus kicks in, I've got a, a nano big muff pedal by Electro Harmonics which is used by like the Smashing Pumpkins on Siamese Dream which was a big influence for this track um, it just has such a wall of sound and a nice um, just a nice kind of rumble to the distortion a nice fizz to it um, yeah very hard clipping fuzz pedal um, well which is what fuzz is basically is just hard clipping it's, it's harsher clipping than uh, overdrive and distortion. <coughs> I think I use the phase shifter, um, which is really cool. Um, get a nice psychedelic vibe from that. Um, so that's like replicating if like two microphones are facing towards each other and the the waves are like not hitting at the same time. It's all like alternating so that's what that's trying to replicate that that process uh, as a MIDI instrument I used this keyboard here uh, and I just USB it to the computer to the laptop so this is what I use for the drums and I just programmed it in um, because you can through the door it allows me to uh, kind of overdub stuff like I don't have to do it in one take I can just keep like adding bits like I can even like duplicate duplicate like that by pressing D but I can I can just add stuff at any time and move it around to the different components so there like I can add a, add a crash there and sort of on the start of every bar I can get a crash on that um, to make it really rhythmic you can see on the DAW in Studio One 
this top channel here is the uh, guitar that's acting as, as a bass line uh, but because I've done some automation on the frequency um, I did a low pass filter um, or a high cut uh, both the same thing um, to sort of compensate for it being a mid-rangey guitar I had to compensate and uh, really um, make it more bass like by um, by doing this automation and then this here is the jazzy chords on this channel the second cha channel down is the jazzy chords that are strummed at the start of every bar uh, to keep like a pulse going and then uh, my, my MIDI drums are here and you can see that I can um, it allows me to duplicate and to I can like overdub stuff on the fly I can um, do multiple takes um, <coughs> adding more components of the drum kit in without affecting what I've already played which is a great feature that Studio One allows me to do um, and I've got my shimmer reverbs down here just as some added texture for the verses um, I've got lots of uh, panning choices going on because I've got um, a lot of duplicates of the same instrument being played so I thought if I pan them right left and central then especially for when the chorus hits then I've got that big wall of sound where I've got the whole stereo field covered um, so it hits very hard um, when the chorus arrives so as you can see here I've got chorus up there look so this is when it starts and you can see I've ramped up uh, the panning there um, so I get a thicker image um, so, so like here yeah so more panning there when the chorus hits oh yeah I've got sends here so I've used some, yeah, so I've used some, I used a flanger there. Um, I've used some software equipment, uh, software plugins, stock plugins. So I've got mixy verb there, reverb on the vocals. I've got a flanger on one of the channels for the vocals. Um, also a bit of reverb on the drums just to not make it sound so dry um, did some EQ on one of the vocal tracks just uh, did a real sharp low cut um, at around 250 Hertz and a bit of compression compression on it to even out the levels so my vocals aren't uh, going up and down in the mix it's just the amplitude is remaining constant uh, throughout and then uh, what's that red light uh, that's the distortion on the bass so I've got a bit of drive there for when the chorus kicks in just to just to give it that edge that can um, allow it to keep up ampli amplitudial wise with um, the big muff on the guitar uh, in terms of dynamics uh, I, ne I needed to add that distortion just to keep it competitive with the uh, guitars and that's it